Thank you, Les Ken Corla. Now, today we're discussing a directive which relates directly to the free movement of capital cross-border in the EU and the necessity that we must ensure robust and comprehensive legislation and systems to protect individuals and member states from the negative effects of money laundering. Now, member states have a duty to set up centralised bank account registries, and these have to be interconnected, thus allowing a single European access point. Then, designated authorities can access that information, for example, about whether an individual has bank accounts in different member states or is moving money across border. I suppose in the simplest of terms, they can follow the money. But Minister, little did I think last week when I was reading through this directive uh, that in fact I would be a few days later reading a headline which stated reports of 50 young people from Kerry Town recruited as money mules for an international crime syndicate. Now these young people are allowing their bank accounts to be used by criminals to launder and transfer money. Money that comes from criminal activity and money that causes pain and devastation to individuals and communities. So here we are today, quite rightly, discussing legislation to put it in place to prevent cross-border money laundering. And yet, right in front of our notices, second and third level students are involved in exactly that, allowing their bank accounts to be used to launder, to conceal and to move the proceeds of crime. Cross county, cross border, it's essentially the same. Now, Minister, I have no doubt that for Kerry, we could substitute Waterford or Wexford, Sligo or Donegal. Recruiters are most likely working right across the country, perhaps in your town, in my town right now. I don't know, but I expect some or many of these young people do not realise what's happening and just see it as a handy way to make a few bob or even do a favour for a mate. But Minister, not only are these young people now actively engaged in this criminal activity, some of them will become trapped because those who want to exert pressure on them now or later have leverage. These are our sons, our daughters, nieces, nephews, grandchildren. And I honestly believe we have a duty to act now. Second and third level colleges, schools need to immediately and consistently hammer home the message, under no circumstances allow your bank account to be used for any purpose. But more than that, the Minister for Education, the Minister for Justice, the Minister for Children and their departments all have a role. So have the banks. Get that message out there. Minister, I think we need to look at perhaps some kind of strictly time-limited amnesty to give cover to young people who have got caught up in this web of exploitation. We could do it when people owe tax. I think we should at least investigate, can we do it now? This directive is to stop cross-border money laundering Yes, but let's act now to stop this rush and to close down the avenue that is drawing many young Irish people right now into criminality. I'm saying, Minister, let's not wait. Many young people and their families are under pressure right now. Many have and had no notion of the consequences of their action. I say straight up, I have no expertise when it comes to amnesties. But in this House, 
our responsibilities are not just to the operation of cross-border financial system. That's right and proper. But our responsibilities are also to our young people and to protect them from the claws of criminals and organised crime. Minister, I believe if we don't act now, laws will be broken, but more importantly, lives will be destroyed. And I would ask you to consider what I've suggested.